grasslands, um, sort of about remaining proportions of grasslands and threats and things. We have talked about those things, but I'll put up some facts and statistics for you as well. But obviously, I'll leave, I'm going to have to leave some gaps in there because otherwise, um, you know, you won't have anything to research yourself. But obviously, you know, as always, email me any questions and things. Um, I just thought today uh, it's really frustrating, obviously, not being able to go out. Um, So, if we have a look at this one first. So, uh, this one here, okay, you can see it, it's just coming into flower. And I don't think, it's not quite spilling any pollen out yet. When it is, you hit that and you'll see the pollen coming out. Uh, it's round. The stem is quite round. But the real clue on this is how incredibly hairy it is. It's really, really hairy all around here. And... Uh, I don't know if any of you know what that is, but it's Luzula campestris, which is field wood rush. So it's not a true rush like a juncus, um, like something like soft rush, but this is field wood rush. It's a, a relative of the rushes. Um, so that's that's the, one of the lovely ones here that always, always for me, one of the markers of spring when I see this. I know we always think about lovely spring flowers, you know, primroses and, and daffs and things, but yeah, for me, this is a real mark of the spring. So we'll do a couple of grasses as well. So uh, here you can see we've got a bit more tussocky grass growth here, and we've got one particularly big, big grass here. Um, and if I just pull one of these out of the ground, you might be able to see it's a little bit slightly glaucusy as well, a little bit of blue green. Now remember, whenever you're pulling specimens out, one obviously make sure that you're not pulling out the only one. That there's a few of them, especially if they're rare. Pull them up with the roots if you can, um, so you can make a positive identification. Um, so try and pull out as much as possible. So if you look at this one, you can see it's quite wide in the base, but then if you turn it that way, it gets very, very narrow. So it's flattened in the base. This is the one I always say it looks like it's been put in a vice. It's got a fold in its leaf like this. It's not twisty. Um, so, you know, though this is a tussocky grass, it's a tussocky grass that can grow in environments like this. It's clearly not false oak grass. Uh, another clue that a lot of people use, it's got a very the, the sort of chaffy base, all this sort of um, brown growth and things around it. And let's have a little look at the ligule. So, peel that back for there. And it's got really quite a prominent ligule. So this is Dactylis glomerata or coxfoot. So that's the first one. Um, we've got here. Okay, so three three leaves here. So you know, hopefully you should all get that quite quickly as as trifolium, as clover. So this one is hairy. So that would make it trifolium pretensi or red clover. Um, remember, unlike white clover, it, that does not make it. It's not an indicator of. Um, uh, improved grasslands. Red clover is a nice one to find in an area, although it's still common. Um, so what else can we see in here that's quite nice? Obviously things aren't all in flower yet. Um, let's have a look. Uh, I think if you come around this edge right here. So there's a couple of things here, but first of all, um, you can see the growth form of this here, okay. Um, so, do you remember what term you would use for the, this sort of growth form? We've well, got a center, the meristem is at the center, and you've got all these growth, all this growth coming out here. So that's a, what you call a rosette plant, very resistant to grazing and mowing, you know, because it's very difficult to sort of nibble down to that. You tend to nibble these leaves off. Uh, so these are the newer leaves. So they're the, the new, newest ones emerged in the last couple of days. They're a bit older, and then underneath are the older leaves again. So that's plantain, and uh, yeah, an example of a rosette plant. Um, there's uh, here, this is, you won't recognize this right now, although you, you do know it. 
it looks quite similar to Devil's Bit Scabious in vegetative form. You can see it's quite softly hairy, which is very different to, sometimes people confuse this with types of thistle. Um, but thistle, obviously prickly, this is sort of lovely and softly and hairy. And this uh, is, in fact, uh, Centurion Igra, um, uh, common knapweed, or, um, or black knapweed, whichever you prefer. So that's that's here, sitting around the edges. That's nice. Obviously, that's not going to flower for a few months yet. Um, here we've got a very thin grass. Okay. See this very, very thin stuff. And it's, it's very soft. It's not at all wiry. We're in the wrong habitat for things like mat grass. This is que clearly quite mesotrophic here. So, you know, I'm pretty sure this is going to be red fescue. I didn't pull it up properly there. Uh, fescues tend to be quite, quite brown at the base when you pull them up, which, which this is. So I'm confident that's a fescue. I'm actually confident this is red fescue. To, to check for sure, we'd have to look under a hand lens and look at the sheath and see if it's um, overlapping or fused. Um, but in a habitat like this, you won't see that on that camera. In a habitat like this, you know, I'm, I'm confident, 95% confident that's gonna be red fescue. So nice little thin wiry leaves. Just seen another one here. Now this is gonna look semi-familiar to you guys. So this is, um, Looks a bit like Creeping Buttercup, if you thought that, well done. But it's not. Uh, it's, it's a, I do this on a little bit of jizz, to be honest. It's, it's not quite... Um, for one thing, it's not spreading all over the place. You know, Creeping Buttercup would have stolons and things going out in every which way. But this is sort of stuck in one point. And unlike Creeping Buttercup, this one uh, will stick in one place. Um, it, it won't. It doesn't like ground disturbance, which creeping buttercup does. So this is bulbous buttercup, and I'm not going to dig it up. But if I were to dig this up, there'd be a big bulb under it. When it's flowers, it's easy to do because the sepals underneath are folded downwards, uh, and that makes it really, really easy in flower. But yeah, the leaves. Are, yeah, I, I must be honest. I, I can't quite give you a reason. It's just a bit of jizz that tells me that they're not. They're not creeping buttercup. Uh, okay. Um, oh, and. I think some of us looked at this when we were dry stone walling. So we've got a cardamony, uh, either cardamony flexuosa or um, hirsuta. Uh, there's wavy bittercress, which I think is flexuosa, and a hairy bittercress, which is hirsuta. I might be wrong about that. I do get those the wrong way around. Um, at any rate, it's impossible to I get the common names the wrong way around. That is. Um, it is impossible to tell the difference between this um, until you've got the flower. Um, and uh, yeah, um, but this is this is one of those two anyways, related to cuckoo flower, and this is edible. It's just got a lovely peppery sort of taste to it, and hopefully my dog hasn't peed on it. Yeah, there we go. Um, and that's, yeah, that's really, really nice. Really nice to put in a spring salad if you've ever got a chance to go and look for it. Okay, and um, we'll do one more, or rather I'm going to get you to do one more, if you come this way. Hmm. Oh, actually, two more. <laughs> I can't, three more, maybe just three more. Okay, so, uh, if we look down by here, first of all, here we've got this very glaucous grey-green little plant, and I'm just going to pull a little bit of it out. Now, I don't know how well you can see that, but that is semi-triangular in cross-section. Oh, look, it's coming into flower, look. There's the male, that's the male part of the flower, just quietly emerging there. But how glaucous it is, it's grey-green. Um, there's only one of, it, it can be one of two sedges. Um, if it's that, it, it's either going to be um, a Carex flacca, um, which is Glaucus sedge in English, or um, Carex panacea, which is carnation sedge. Um, this is Carex flacca, because carnation sedge, Carex panacea, you only really get in bogs and things. Uh, and you can see it's slightly more Glaucus on the underside than it is on the on the top side. You might be able to see that. But a habitat tells me this this has really got to be flacca. And uh, one of my favourites. You get this in unimproved grasslands of all types. This really hairy little thing, long wispy hairs, and it'll be dead white underneath when we turn it over. There it is. Calcareous grassland, acid grassland, all sorts. This is uh, Mousia hawkweed. And um, 
uh, yeah, so this this is getting all kinds of unimproved grasslands, a really nice little one, how white it is underneath. It has a flower that looks a bit dandelion-like then later in the summer. And finally we've got one in flower by here, spring flowering one over here, and it's a nice easy one for you to do, I'm going to get you, one, you guys to ID this one now, because we haven't talked much about this one actually, but it's got sky blue flowers, um, and it's got a yellow interior, and it's sort of got softly hairy leaves uh, all over. So have a little look at that one for me. Okay, we'll finish up over by here, we'll have a little stand by me. Okay. So guys, um, yeah, good luck with your assignments. Um, yeah, please post some comments and things. Um, not actually, second, scratch that. Just post some answers to the questions I've asked. Don't post any comments. Um, but uh, yeah, good luck with your assignments. You know, post any questions here or email me to whatever. And um, I'll be in touch and show you some more species soon. Look after yourself. Ta-da, guys.